Folks, not the best of the Eric Zane Show podcast is created in the Baldwin Ace Hardware Fear Bunker Studio. If you ever want to catch my show live, you can do it on Twitch, twitch.tv slash Eric Zane Live. Follow me on Facebook, facebook.com slash Eric Zane fan page, Twitter at Eric Zane Show. I've got a YouTube channel. And as always, you can email me whenever you have something to say. Eric at Eric Zane Show.com on the Shore Liners Striping Inbox. I've got t-shirts available at ericzaneshow.com. I hope you enjoy not the best of the Eric Zane Show podcast. One more thing, I have a Patreon, patreon.com slash Eric Zane. If you uh, go there, you get more podcasting every day of the work week, in some cases, every day of the week. But uh, we're looking at about 15 plus hours of content in addition to the free content that you get. Patreon.com slash Eric Zane. Five bucks a month is all the audio and the audio archive, 10 bucks a month is audio, audio archive, video, video archives, and live streams. So there you go. That uh, might be something that uh, uh, you want to check out if you want just a little bit more content. If you convert it to a, a yearly, I will knock 10% off of the cost. Okay, but then you got to pay it all up front. Some people don't like to do that, but whatever, that's fine. If not, that's cool, too. I just appreciate the time. Thank you so much. Enjoy Not the Best of the Eric Zane Show podcast. And welcome to the Eric Zane Show podcast. This is a daily show where we talk. Hold on. Yeah. We talk news, nonsense, and my personal adventures. The show has begun. Coming to you on location from Fear Bunker North. That is in Grayley, Michigan. People are like, what the hell are you doing up in Grayley, Michigan? In what looks like, uh, well, uh, it, it's hard to describe, but this is a uh, 1956 Pontiac Chief trailer, or I guess mobile home. And uh, it's been in my family for uh, for years and decades, decades. It's been here forever. The The story goes, my dad found it in southeast Michigan, uh, uh, basically on a car lot along Telegraph Road. All the windows busted out of it. And uh, the guy who um, owned the uh, lot said, I want this thing out of here. My dad said, I'll take it off your hands. He goes, yeah, I, I'm not even going to charge you for it. I'll charge you $1 for the title. The guy who owns it or the lady who owns it, uh, she won't come get it. So it's mine now. So I'm selling it to you. All you got to do is, and and your payment to me is getting it out of here. You you just have to get it out. So my dad got it out and brought it up here. And here it sits. All right. So it might not, it might not even be, it might not have even have been his ever. Might not even be mine. Somebody might take it away from me. Oh, who would want a 1956 Pontiac? Well, I think a lot of people would. These days, everything old is new again. The whole vintage thing. Uh, I would love to fix this up one day. Uh, but, uh, you know, time uh, time and uh, is a commodity for me. So hopefully one day. I had a conversation with my brother the other day. He goes, man, burn that thing down. Hell, some of you have even said that with regard to the fact that the mice got in here. Pissed everywhere. Uh, I did not kill a mouse yesterday. The traps are empty. I think I got the family. I obliterated and uh, and and cremated a family of mice. There's probably about four or five little little gray ones. They're really cute. The, actually, they're all cute. The mom and dad are brown with white bellies. They're dead. Uh, and then uh, you know yeah, the, the the fire's going. I told you about this. We throw them on the fire, incinerate them. And then the kids roast marshmallows uh, as the as the mice remains. The mouse remains burn. I didn't tell him that part. Hey, Dad, can we roast mar- Dad? Can we roast a marshmallow? Yeah, yeah. Dad, uh, how come this uh, s'more tastes like burnt hair? <laughs> All right, so yeah, that's uh, that's that's definitely a thing. I I can't. Uh, I've got a job in front of me, and that is explaining to you how the day went yesterday, and um, part of the explanation of the day is kind of like, not exactly funny, but it's going to get funny, of the uh, anxiety in my brain. Now, 
uh, truth be told, I'm not a severe anxiety guy. It comes and goes. Like uh, uh, like my uh, buddy, Big Dick Donnie Veltman, he just did a Facebook post recently talking about he has extreme anxiety and he is just having a, a hell of a time lately. So I'm thinking about him. And uh, so it's not, it's not really, really that bad. But uh, I learned something yesterday, and I'll get to that in a second. But um, this all has to be told in order. If you recall yesterday, if uh, you're watching any bit of the podcast, I, uh, I, I mentioned that I had, was drinking coffee, and it was really, really strong. Now, I, I normally make my coffee very, very strong, but this was even too strong for me. And, you know, the average cup of coffee is about 80 milligrams of caffeine, and I would guess the average cup of my coffee has much more than that. Um, I brew it very, very strong. So probably 100, 120 milligrams of caffeine. Strong, strong caffeine, uh, coffee. Well, and it tastes great to me. It tastes absolutely perfect with that much actual scoops of coffee into there. Well, the stuff I made yesterday, it was like turpentine. And I almost couldn't take it. You may have seen in the video, I would drink, oh, God, that is strong. But I kept chugging it. Man, this wrecked me. And uh, I, I, I I, even told a story about how when I haven't felt this way since uh, I was a kid and somebody dared me to take a bunch of those no-dose tablets. So um, as the day wore on, I started to have thoughts going around in my head. And it started to dawn on me, because usually it doesn't dawn on me. Usually I just go with the thoughts and it makes me, and I just go off the deep end. And uh, I I walk up to my wife. I go, I'm having an anxiety attack. Uh, Everything in my head is really extreme and uh, uh, I'm I'm not going to make it. And uh, I'm very scared. And I mean, it was all, it was fucked up is what it was. And uh, I, I sounded like a bitch because I was like, I, I just don't think we're going to be able to make it. And uh, I think this whole house of cards uh, is going to, I kept calling it a house of cards, is going to tumble down. It's not. It's, I mean, hell, uh, there's so many podcasts, like I indicated on a post, 342 podcasts. I, I know what the hell I'm doing. I've, I've done a fucking bang up job uh, uh, supporting the family with this, this podcast. What the fuck are you doing telling yourself that you're not going to fucking make it, you dumb shit? So now I'm, I'm back on the right side of the tracks now. But I wasn't yesterday. It was bad. So um, the day wears on, and uh, a couple of things started to make this worse. Um, when you own a business like this, you have uh, your personal banking and your, and your business banking. Now, what I oftentimes forget to do is because I actually have to go and write a check from the business account to me, a physical check, take a picture of it, and deposit it. Well, dummy me did not do that. I didn't get a paycheck. I forgot all about it. So (laughs) we drive up to Gaylord, which is about 15 minutes from here. And by by the way, people in Gaylord, I've never seen so many people uh, uh, walk with a limp and have a cane in one Walmart. They weren't incredibly ugly at this Walmart. Like if, if I go to the Granville Walmart by my house in West Michigan, it is, you get some real trollish people that look like they live under bridges. The people in Gaylord weren't, they didn't look like that. They all look like they're racist and uh, waving confederate flags in fact i did see a guy with a confederate flag on his uh front license plate placard of his truck see the further north you go the more southern it gets you know but uh god dang it i've never seen more people with canes and limps and wooden legs and it's like i don't know maybe to in order to join the clan up here you got to cut your leg off or something i have no idea but uh, anyway, so I'm walking around the uh, the, the Walmart. We, we buy probably 100 bucks worth of shit. No big deal. And uh, my anxiety's through the roof. It's bad. And I still feel like shit, real jittery. This is four in the afternoon. I was done drinking coffee by 10. That gives you an idea. It's just not working its way through fast enough, the, uh, the caffeine. And I'm just ruined. 
And then this makes it that much more worse. I uh, I go and I put my card in. Denied. Oh, what the? Are you? Huh? How can this be? Well, clearly I've been a victim of a scam from a Nigerian emailer or a, or a Nigerian prince or whatever through email. And right there, I, I open up the bank app. and I'm looking at it. I go, it says I got 46 bucks in here. Holy shit. But somebody stole all our money. And I look at it. I go, okay, I remember that charge. Yeah, I remember that charge. I remember. Fuck. We're broke. What the fuck are we going to do? I mean, with all these groceries, who's been through this? Oh, that's a terrible feeling. You got a hundred, you want to buy a hundred dollars of shit? You got 46 bucks in the bank. What the fuck? Uh, by the way, time out. Phil Polanski is watching this video. Phil Polanski is, uh, he has been in this trailer many times. He's a friend from, uh, uh, years ago. He used to date my stepsister. I bet you he puked somewhere over there. What's up, Phil? Good to see you here. So anyway, I'm like freaking out and I go, all right, I'll just bust out this credit card, bust out the credit card, pay for it. All right, good. But I'm like, this really made it that much worse. The anxiety. Now I'm like, oh, we're desperate. We're dead. This is terrible. So Diana's like not saying a word. And uh, so Jesus, it, uh, this goes on and uh, I get to the car and, uh, and by the way, also in Gaylord, nobody wears a mask up here. They they don't even know anything about coronavirus. It's it's not a, they they were looking at us like like we're crazy. We're the only people in the entire county wearing a mask. More on that later. The mask and social distancing is uh, is becoming a problem. It is a problem in the world. This is just crazy shit. So I'm in the car, freaking out. Still, I'm hungry as hell. Uh, also, uh, adding to the uh, struggle is the diet. Diet bet began yesterday. And, uh, oh, my God. It, it, all of these things were just made a million times worse. So I, I, I've done this all to myself. And it's, I think the start of it was drinking too much caffeine because uh, Diana looks it up and she goes, the number one thing that can happen to a person is, especially if they already suffer from anxiety, it's made like it's, it's compounded like incredibly when you have too much caffeine it's like a side effect of it it just puts your it puts you on edge and your anxiety goes through the roof and i go really holy shit what uh, what what cures it she goes well water uh, uh exercise and i go cool let's have sex uh, in the walmart parking lot in gaylord michigan with everybody walking around with a limp uh, she, she wasn't about that. I ended up having to rake leaves uh, all throughout the day to, to help. I mean, for the rest of the day, just to get the the blood flowing. I didn't want to go running or anything like that. But man, it was just bad, so bad. But um, there was one more thing that made this a million times worse. Where um, I was going to call nine one one, and that was uh, I, I I talked about it in the in, and when I wrote it down for the Facebook Live. There was all of this that had happened to me, and I had to go to one more store. I went to the Lowe's. I had to get some bar oil for the chainsaw. And I go in, and uh, I, I get it. I walk out. And then I go back to where the car is. No car. And I look all around. Cannot find the car. Immediately, my brain goes to... Well, some uh, Confederate flag waving son of a bitch has stolen my wife. She's gone and she's probably dead. That's immediately where my brain went. I can't find the car like legit. And so I'm looking high and low. I can't find it. I'm walking up and down aisles. I can't find her. And I know that I'm where i was i mean what what could possibly have happened so i reach for my phone i'm gonna call the cops no phone it's in the car oh my god i gotta go back into lowe's to call the cops my wife is missing she was here in the parking lot she is now gone someone has stolen her and the car uh and my groceries that i put on a credit card because i only had 46 bucks in my bank account we got to get her back. 
she's probably dead. And I'm not kidding you. This is, I didn't, this is no exaggeration, no hyperbole, uh, no hyperbole. I was walking back into the store. I take two steps. I notice I have the, the key fob for the Civic in my pocket. That's the car. I go, well, if I got the key, the, the car can't move. I go, but I know I have a second set of keys up here. Maybe I left it in the car. That's exactly what happened. That's how the bad guy got away. Because though I have the key fob, the other one's still in there. For a second, I was like, maybe Diana moved the car just to be silly. So I'm walking into the store. and uh, But I'm convinced she's, she's gone. I can't find her. As I'm walking towards the store, this older couple, I mean really old, is, uh, is walking out. And we're about to intersect paths. I mean, they're old. Like, I'm expecting the guy to walk laps around his backyard and raise $37 million. I mean, he's that old. And his wife is that old. And she's walking. She's got her keys in her hand. And all of a sudden, at the same time that they jump and are freaking out, they went, ah, right in front of me. Someone is laying on a horn right in front of them. You know who, don't you? Of course you do. It's Diana. She lays on the horn and she, because she saw me like looking. And uh, so, yes, I found her. Thank God. I'm so excited and happy. And uh, the the anxiety is, is leaving because I now have my wife and she's not dead. And I don't have to go in and call the cops to, 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 to go look for her. Uh, but all of the fear has now left me and is now in these two old timers. And and they like, because they're like 10 feet away from the car and Diana lays on the horn. I'm like, Jesus, man, what the fuck? Why would you? Can't you just, hey, toodaloo. Hi, honey. And it turns out that the lady, she was like, uh, had her key fob. She was uh, like trying to unlock her car door at about that exact same time when Diana hit the horn. So it scared the shit out of her. And she goes, oh, goodness. I thought that was me that did that. I'm like, ah. Oh. Yeah, this this is not you. It's me. It's I I caused all of this. This is this, too much caffeine caused all this. I'm trying to explain to these people, they're like, ah, he's a crazy fucking whippersnapper. Holy shit, it was so bad. And then uh, he kind of looks at me like I'm nuts. I go at after you, sir. Pardon me. And he just walks away. And they uh, who knows what happened to them. Oh my God, their heart probably their heart probably rocketed up to a hundred beats per minute. Man, I got into that car. I go, what the fuck, man? I go, did you move this thing? She goes, no. And she's laughing hysterically at me. It turns out there's a dude in a fucking monster truck, of course, a Gaylord. And he's, he decided to buy uh, 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 his entire landscaping. And he uh, has put them in the bed of this fucking truck. So it looks like the, the, the Sequoia National Forest all around my car. You can't see shit. It's a Civic. It's real low to the ground. So I was blocked by fucking Colt Seavers hauling all this shit uh, in, his, in the bed of his truck. Fucking A, man. I was so pissed. Oh, I get pissed just talking about it. Ooh, a Kirtland Warbler. Sorry, there's a bird. That used to be almost extinct. And he's oh, he's, oh, he's building a nest. Hello. Hello, baby. Look it up. Kirtland Warbler. The Kirtland Warbler uh, is is uh, indigenous to, like, this area. And there was only, like, one of them left, like, 50 years ago. And now they thrive. They're everywhere. Thank you. Earth Day. Earth Day. Can you believe all of that? That all happened in a day. So I come home, make dinner, build another fire, getting my way through it, making my way through this uh, terrible, terrible day brought on by too much caffeine and doubt and my dumb brain tricking me. Do you have this happen? Can you relate to this? You must, because so many people suffer from anxiety. It's a very, very real, terrible thing. But some people have it on such a level that they, like, do crazy shit, like kill themselves. So, fuck, man, I, uh, just a taste of that is enough to make me just have an awful awful time man damn it i'm so sorry for you that struggle with that i know big dick donnie damn it i gotta i gotta i should call him and say hey man i'm, I'm right there with you Whew, that was bad so uh made dinner ate dinner all right great go for a walk rake the leaves feeling better all right we're gonna make it and feeling better yes it's happening 
Yeah, momentum. Thank God. Free me from the shackles of this. And then uh, we're on the walk. I go, look, let's make s'mores. Now, you know we're on diet bet now because we, Diana and I are so fat. This quarantine, the COVID-19 the uh, COVID pounds is all over us. I could stand to lose. I want to be about 155, so I could stand to lose 22, which is about what I lost when I did the deal with uh, on BBL, the um, Master Waiters. Remember that? Uh, that was a fun thing. You know, that uh, that 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 led to uh, – uh, never mind. Uh, but anyway, yeah, Master Waiters is, um, was, was the thing. So this diet bet, man, is just – we're underway now, and uh, like I indicated, the, the quickest way for me to lose this is keto. But keto's a bitch! So hard! Uh, I, I constantly crave carbs, but yesterday was a good day. But last night, man, I'm like, let's do a s'more. Let's, let's eat a s'more. Uh, Megan, I see you watching. Diana even said, I'm going to tell Megan. Fupas Unite! She goes, I'm going to tell Megan you better not. I go, come on, just one. We've been good. And she goes, that, that, that isn't how keto works. You can't just break, break it like that because then your body's going to crave more carbs and it's not going to burn the fat. You know, you know how this works. You know the chemistry. You know how the metabolism works, you idiot. You're the one who taught me. I go, I know, man, but I want I'm sitting by the fire grailing. Freaking fear bunker north. Had a horrible day. We can just pound some s'mores. She goes, I, no way. I'm going to win that fucking bet, Eric. You think you're funny, but you're not. All right. <sighs> Breathe. Today, I just had a couple of normal cups of coffee. And, you know, maybe another one, maybe one normal one later. But that's it. No more am I doing that high octane fucking double the triple the caffeine. Whew. Hope you're all doing well on diet bed. There's about 20 of you. Um, I haven't had to weigh in since we started. It won't be long, though. And, uh, you know, if we lose 4%, we win our money back. We should do, like, a fat bet. Is there a way we can go the other way? Like, see who can actually get the fat. Is there an app for that, Megan? Fat bet? We can do that around the holidays. Instead of losing the weight, we can see who can gain the highest percentage of, of body weight. In a, in a four-week period. Now, that would be incredible. However, it's, you know, it's not too good to do that yo-yo weight thing. So I don't know if that's a good idea. But maybe it may be an idea for, a, for an app. The fat bet. Shit, yeah. I got to write that down. Quick pause. Because this is how I eat. The sponsors help out by sponsoring the show. You visit the sponsors. Bosco's Pub. Hudsonville, Michigan. An amazing place to eat burgers and drink beer. Awesome. Part of Terra Square. Uh, if you go over there, please mention my name. Bosco's Pub. Amazing award-winning burgers. I'm not even kidding you. The Olive Burger actually has won the Grand Rapids Best Award, whatever the hell that is. But still, people voted on it and they won. I am partial to the um, uh, Luigi, which, oh my God. You eat that, you don't have to eat for like four days. Bosco's Pub, Hudsonville, Michigan. Irvine's Auto Repair, Grand Rapids Hybrid and EV, ER Vines, ER Vines, 616-532-6600. Uh, check them out online. Their Google reviews are amazing from so many satisfied customers. Servicing European, domestic, and Asian vehicles, with the exception of Volkswagens, and the experts on hybrids and EVs. The dealerships send their cars to Irvine's when their customers, uh, when they can't fix their customers' cards, like, all right, you guys got to do it, man. We're going to pass it off to you. 616 532 6600. Love them. Another longtime sponsor, A and E Heating and Cooling. Senor Joe Martinez uh, installing the Comfort Maker brand of furnaces and air conditioners. If you ever need any type of scheduled maintenance or just something goes wrong, Call upon A and E heating and cooling. Seventy nine bucks. That is what it costs to get that AC unit tuned up, uh, tuned up, tuned up, and it will run so much more efficiently. Love it. Thank you, A and E heating and cooling. Continuing on with not the best of 
the Eric Zane Show podcast. Here you go. But this first story here that I want to get to post open is, well, a lot of things. And and, uh, it it comes to us from Indonesia, and there is video for this. So I I will link it up. And uh, you must see it. And and not only if you you forget, I'll post it on my social media for you to have a look at it. And uh, it, it is, if I see a story about a monkey riding a bike, no matter what, I am going to click on it. For that alone. If, I, if there's a story of a monkey riding a bike, I want to see that. Who wouldn't want to see that? I remember when uh, uh, back in the day um, for the Whitecaps, they used to bring in this guy who had a, a, a dog, and um, this monkey would show up on the field. The, the, the dogs would be on the field with monkeys on their backs and cowboy hats, and the monkeys would ride the dogs. And fuck the fucking game. I don't give a shit about the game. I want to see a monkey riding on the back of a dog. Who wouldn't? I would be like, man, no, I don't want to see the players. I want to see all these monkeys have like play cowboys and Indians on the field. What are you crazy? So that just sounds fantastic. So when I see the story about in Indonesia, this, this video of the monkey riding the bicycle, I'm like, well, I got to see this, man. This is great, but there's a hell of a lot more to it. And as I um, as I, I'm sitting here, I'm, I'm watching it happen, and it's just fantastic because it takes an even more sinister turn. That is just great. Holy shit! In the Indonesian city of Surabaya, you see an aerial shot looking down of this monkey cruising on this bike down the street. This is a little shit monkey who might like grind an organ, you know. And he's going by three kids on the side of the road, and they're like waving at the monkey. How how wonderful is this? We live in a great place where we can see monkeys riding down the road. There's a little toddler there. He's probably like 12 months old with the two older kids. And the monkey goes riding by the little kid and grabs him. Yeah. And while riding the bike, he's now dragging the little shit down the street. Then the monkey says, you know, you know what? This bike is slowing me down. I can probably do better if I'm running. He, he, he ditches the bike. Like, remember when you were a kid, you would ghost ride your bike, get off and just let it go. So the bike goes flying down the street. And now the monkey has the, the toddler, the kids in his diapers, you know, he's probably smoking a cigarette. You know how they do. And so and what, what country was that where the kid was smoking the cigarettes? They're like, like the one-year-old kid was having cigarettes. Remember him? Uh, I'll link it up. Smoking kid is fantastic. I think that was in Indonesia too. I want to move there. I want to see one-year-old kids smoking cigarettes and, and, and monkeys riding down the streets on bikes, grabbing kids and taking them off, uh, taking them to their hideaway to, to eat their eyes out. The kid, the monkeys are running down the street, gra- dragging the kid. The kid's like, oh, fuck, man, I'm getting road rash. Kids just, just uh, t- taking a ride. The monkey's dragging them. Some crazy fucker uh, goes chasing after the monkey, and he's going to beat the shit out of the monkey. So the monkey's like, ah, oh, fuck, I can't really go too fast because I'm dra- dragging this fat-ass kid smoking a cigarette, so I got to let him go. The, the, the monkey now has no bike and no kid. He ditches the kid, and he takes off running down the street. Holy shit. This is the best. You must see this video. This is the one. See, yesterday, the big story was... Uh, 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 murder hornets, you know, and that story was, eh, it was all right, but it wasn't really sexy or anything, you know, like that. It's kind of weird. He's crazy looking. But today, uh, the one crazy monkey tries stealing a kid while he's riding a bike. Oh, just the best. All right. So the kid's okay. Monkey got away. Oh, the, uh, let's see. The boy was traumatized but uninjured. Well, who cares? He's internet famous now. Yasa Supaniji took the video, told the uh, authorities the incident happened uh, May 2nd, actually, as uh, the village gathered to watch the performance. Of course, the kid was fine. Man, holy shit, you got to get this kid on Kimmel. Get him a pack of smokes. I don't know. Probably won't say too much. He's a year old. 
That was just stupid. All right, so monkey on a bike. You're going to love it. I can't wait for you to see it. I wish you could see it right this second. Okay, so uh, if you got college-age kids, they've been doing their courses online, finishing up their uh, their, their school year. I know that uh, uh, for Jacqueline and Madison that that was the case. So if you pay for the kid's college or the kid pays for the college or the kid's getting loans, you know, they, uh, the school is doing what it can to get the kids appropriate education. But the question is being floated about the validity of students. Do they deserve their money back? All or some of the money that they paid for college courses? And at first I was like, ah, fuck, no, 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 they don't deserve the money. And I was like, wait a minute, what am I talking about? First of all, it's ridiculously overpriced. For a little old Grand Valley State, it's like 550 bucks for one credit hour. I mean, think about that. The, the, the college cost is ridiculous. When I went to college, it was like 70 bucks for a credit hour. I can't imagine the rate of inflation uh, is, is, I mean, that, that sounds ridiculous and completely inappropriate. It goes from 70 some bucks an hour back in 1990 to now, I know it's a long time ago, but that much I'd be okay. If it was, I don't know, 125. Okay. It doubles. Let's say it was, let's say it was 150 bucks an hour for a credit hour, but do they deserve their money back? Let's hear them out. They're like, no, man, we absolutely deserve our money back. And here's why. Uh, when we go to college and we are face to face with the uh, with the instructor. I mean, yeah, we got a virtual thing, but it's not like we can like talk to the guy. He's holding an online lecture. We're taking notes. Yes, we're tested. But don't you pay for a uh, in class experience? Isn't that what it is? I don't know. The article from CBS News says they wanted the campus experience, but their colleges sent them home to learn online. Now students at more than 25 U.S. universities are filing lawsuits against their schools, demanding partial refunds on tuition and campus fees. Absolutely. Yes. Saying they're not getting the caliber of education they were promised. Now, it's not the school's fault that there's a pandemic, but still. It shouldn't be. You should get some of that money back. Absolutely. Colleges are rejecting the idea that refunds are in order because students are learning from the same professors who teach on campus. So what? And students are still earning the credits toward their degrees. Well, then why do they ever go to school anyway? If you can do it this way, why would they ever go to your college? If you're pricing it at a premium, what's the point of that? Uh, This student uh, filed a class. Granger Rickenbacker is the one, of course, a guy who files a class action lawsuit. His name, Granger Rickenbacker or Baker, uh, filed a class action lawsuit against Drexel University in Philly. Said the online classes he's been taking are poor substitutes for classroom learning. Man, I hate agreeing with students, but I agree with the students. I couldn't sound more old right now. You just feel a little bit diminished, said the 21-year-old from South Carolina. It's just not the same experience I would be getting if I were at the campus. Other students are saying the same damn thing. So do they deserve that? Officials at Michigan State said students are still taking classes taught by uh, qualified faculty. Yeah, but what if you're in a lecture setting? Any questions? All right, yeah. And then that spurs on conversation. What if the... the, uh, what if the uh, lecture involves a lot of critical thinking and conversation and debate, you know? What about the old, uh, you know, after class? That's where the young chicks go and they bring the, uh, the hot teacher an apple. And then before you know it, they're porking. You know, that happens so much. Did you know that at Grand Valley State University, there is a website where you can rank your professors and uh, if he's hot, there's like a chili pepper next to his name. Oh, my God. So, uh, I mean, that's a thing. I mean, I, I would love to find out how many professors bone their students because that's like no big deal, right? Uh, well, I mean, it kind of is, but not really because everybody's an adult now. They're no longer kids. How weird of a world is it that you can be in high school 
and then you're like 17 years old and then if you're a dude uh, teacher and you bone the 17 year old you're going to prison for a long long time but six months later the same chick is putting hot tamale next to college professor's name and then they're boning on a stack of textbooks it happens that's fucking weird man when, da- when, when, when I would hear uh, Jackie say, oh, yeah, but, oh, man, Mr. So-and-so, he's so hot. I gave him a hot pepper next to his name. You fucking, God, knock it off. Fucking hey, man. Uh, lawyers representing the students say that the refunds are a matter of fairness. Along with tuition, the cases seek refunds for fees that students pay to access the gymnasium, you know, like whatever, weight room, whatever it may be, libraries, labs, and other buildings that are now closed. Yeah, sue the shit out of a man. Absolutely. How can this not work? This law, how can this lawsuit not go through? Lawsuits ask courts to answer a thorny question. I like that word. That has come to the force uh, that has come to the fore as universities shift classes online, whether there's a difference in value between online instruction and the traditional classroom. Well, now there should be. Now, if you go to a school where if you buy like an online, like, you know, whatever, you can uh, you can get your classes online remotely and stuff like that. Do they charge you more per credit hour? No wonder why you, you hear ads for so and so university show up online and, uh, and get this get this great education. It's the same as in person. If it is the same as in person, that's a fucking ripoff. No wonder why they want you to do it online. If that's true. <clears throat> All right. So if you have a student, what do you think? A quick pause on not the best of the Eric Zane show podcast to mention full house comedy. If you want to go see a comedy show, they've got venues all over West Michigan, fullhousecomedy.com. Uh, go to their website, see who's appearing. Some great names always at full house comedy venues throughout West Michigan in West Michigan. If you need a dumpster delivered for your job site, for your junk removal, you're ripping the shingles off the roof, whatever it is, you will pay less, excuse me, for a dumpster diver's dumpster. Call or text 616-375-9962. Dumpsterdiversllc.com. Why will you uh, pay less? Boy, I can't talk today. Why will you pay less? Their dumpsters have a weight limit less than the other guys. Because the other guys put the weight limit on it that you can't possibly achieve even if you pack that thing full of cement. They dump it. You pay for a weight limit that you can't possibly achieve. If by chance you do, you know, they'll um, add that onto your bill, but more than likely they won't. You won't. You won't be able to get that uh, weight limit on there. So you're... Uh, it's priced accordingly, 616-375-9962, or visit their website, dumpsterdiversllc.com. One of my favorite people to talk about is uh, Frank Fuss and my policy shop insurance, because what Frank does costs you no money, okay? You will never give him a dime. He is the guy, the licensed independent insurance agent slash broker, who will get you into a health insurance policy through Obamacare or healthcare.gov. That's the, you know, the the thing that you um, have to sign up for uh, if you want health insurance. And I I swear to God, I did this the first year on my own and screwed it up. Okay. And I had a, a whole year of insurance that was not quite suited for me. He makes sure that the policy is best for you and your family. All right. And uh, you want to reach out to him, either call or text 616-914-4070 or fill out the form at buy, B-U-Y, insurancehere.com. Fill it out. He will reach out to you and then you're good to go. Frank Fuss from My Policy Shop Insurance. Continuing on, here you go. More of Not the Best of the Eric Zane Show podcast. A lot of shitty stuff surrounding social distancing and mask wearing first story is just shitty the next two stories after that in this block of stories is downright sinister and terrible and and uh unthinkable okay uh, this is another story that everybody's talking about but uh 
It's not with the happy-go-lucky uh, uh, angle of, of a monkey riding down the street on a bike and grabbing a kid and dragging him down the street. Story number one. Park Ranger, Austin, Texas. Uh, apparently, you can go and uh, jump in the water in Austin. Bunch of people have their bathing suits on. They're all hanging out. They're together. The idea, though, is you must be socially distant from each other in order to avoid the spread of the disease. Uh, you know, I don't know if they saw the press conference about fecal shedding that can happen in the water. But um, so these uh, people are all together and the park ranger is there and they're on a dock. I'll link it up. You can see it. I've got audio of it in a second. Um, the park's like the park ranger's like, you know, you got to stay away six feet. And then some dick of the of the of the team of bros pushes the dude in the water for no reason and then runs away like a bitch. This is how it sounded. I got you, man. Gets out. Idiot runs away. Uh... This is ridiculous. The um, the cop there, you, you you could hear when they're um, when he's talking. The re- the rest of the group is like, "We got you, man. Yeah, we understand. Everybody's being all right." And then I don't understand why this guy did this. I got you, man. The guy was arrested, 25-year-old bro, and, and and you can tell he's the type of guy who isn't going to learn shit about this. He's going to learn shit from this because he's smiling like he's happy with his work in the mugshot. So, okay, now I understand. I mean, this is it's stupid, and and at any age, this is 100% inappropriate, and uh, and and you should get the punishment that is that's coming to you, regardless of the age, but. To be doing something like that at 25 years old seems insane. I mean, that isn't that young. 25 years old, he pushes this grown man into the water. Guy's got his park ranger gear on. He goes after the guy, and the dude runs away like a fucking asshole. That, that, that pissed me off. The rest of these stories, it doesn't get any better. The east side of Michigan. Uh... North of Detroit is a community of Holly, Michigan. Video camera shows this. Do- Both of these stories took place at a dollar store. Now, I mean, you've heard the story, the uh, uh, stereotypes about people that shop at the dollar store. Yeah, you know, you're, you're going to get some shitty people at the dollar store. There's no question. Case in point. This dumb fuck comes walking up to the dollar store. Now, at any store in Michigan, there's a sign that says, per governor's order, you cannot come in here without a mask. It is up to the store to enforce that. Some do, some do not. Everybody knows that. At Walmart, I didn't see here in Gaylord, Grayling, Gaylord area. Well, hell, hardly anybody wears masks up here like I indicated. But, um... There's no one policing that up here. It just depends on the store. But the sign is up there, and it says, you you know, you you can't come in. In Holly, Michigan, uh, there's a lady there, and she's like, you you must wear a mask. You got you got, you can't come into the store unless you got a mask. The guy goes, yeah, here's my mask, and he he walks up to her and rubs his face and nose on her shirt. Now, I'm a, I'm a little befuddled about how he was able to make that happen. I mean, didn't she, how how come she didn't move? No, I see it. Her her back is kind of turned and he grabs like the um shirt sleeve, okay? It isn't like he put his face on her and went like this. He grabbed her shirt sleeve and just and just wiped his his face on her shirt. I can see how he did it. It happened on Saturday at a Dollar Tree. In Holly, about 55 miles north of Detroit. 
Cops say the dude wasn't wearing the mask. She said, you got to wear a mask. And he said, all right, hey, I'll use this. He continued to be loud and disruptive inside the store before leaving. Last seen in a white, possibly a Ford model window van. And they don't, they don't, they didn't catch the guy. I'll link it up and you can see it. And I, I guess what I'm getting at is, uh, how people have lost sight of what has gone on here. Uh, you know, by August, there's going to be 150,000 dead people in the U S alone. And, uh, and the whole idea of this is just to keep people safe. So what's going on that everybody has to be a fucking moron. It's like, we're going to have to write a whole different set of laws for these people. Moron who pushes dude who falls into the lake. Guy who wipes his nose on the shirt. Um, yeah, and his face and, and does all that stuff. And then this. Incredible. Same scenario. Mom and daughter are walking up to the dollar store in Flint. Dude named Calvin Munnerlin is working there. He's the security guard. Munnerlin, 43-year-old family man. He's got eight or nine kids. I saw two different stories. And one said eight kids. He's got a lot of kids. Loves having kids. Big family. Works his ass off as a security guard. This fucking bitch comes walking up to the dollar store. And uh, she's got her, her daughter with her, 45-year-old Charmel Teague does not have a mask on. Actually, Charmel had the mask on, but the daughter that was with Charmel did not have a mask on. Uh, Calvin Munderland says, sorry, ma'am, you can't come in here without, a, the, the, the daughter can't come in without a mask on. Gets out of hand. They start, uh, they start talking to each other, and she raises a stink and swears at the guy and gives him a hard time. He says, all right, you can't, you can't come in the store now. You're out. And she goes, I'm going in the store. And he goes, you can't. Uh, and then he says to the cash, re- cash registers, do not uh, cash her out, whatever she buys. She can't be in the store. Now, he can't, like, grab her by the, by the shirt and throw her out, I don't think, but he's doing the right thing here. He's probably calling the cops, too. Well, she leaves. Well, 20 minutes later, after she spilled the beans to her husband and uh, and her son, these two knuckleheads show up, 44-year-old Larry Edward Teague Jr. and 23-year-old, uh, looks like Ramon Ye Bishop. These two pieces of shit show up. Older guy is talking to guy while... A gutless 23-year-old sneaks up behind Munnerlin, pulls out a pistol, and shoots him dead in the back of the head over this. He's dead. Killed the guy over a fucking mask. Holy shit. All he wanted to do was do his job, do what he's supposed to do, and go home to his family. And these pieces of shit shot him dead. Cops got the mom. Daughter had nothing to do with it. I think these two are still, like, out. Like, they haven't been caught yet. Uh, I'm going to get to the GoFundMe page in a second. That That's a story in itself. Both suspects, as of uh, yesterday, still at large and considered armed and dangerous. Charmel Teague is in custody awaiting arraignment charges in the 67th District Court. This is incredible. I don't, man, it just I, I can't imagine you being that pissed off that over just a simple interaction involving something as, 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 as ridiculous as a mask results in a person having such... Uh, ha- having no regard for human life resulting in, yeah, let's, uh, I'll, I'll talk to him from the front. You sneak up behind him and, and, uh, and, and shoot him assassin style in the back of the head. The store has a big uh, display now, like a memorial. Awful. One of the worst stories I've heard in a long time. 
Actually, it says in this article, he leaves behind nine children and his wife, um, Calvin Munnerlin. GoFundMe page. As of last night, I was looking at this GoFundMe page, and it was, uh, I think they had a goal like $10,000 to bury the guy, and it was uh, quite a bit more than that. It was like 110 when I went to bed, and now it's at $170,000 for the Munnerlin family. Jesus. Two minutes ago, somebody donated $500. How about that? That is just fantastic. I'll link it up. The story up there, I'll link up the GoFundMe. This is just terrible. Fucking A, man. I need some good news. And I got some good news. It's coming up next. Okay, you know, losing fitness, gaining weight, that all hurts a person mentally. Honest to God, that can affect your relationships. It's time to turn this thing around. I want to help you feel better. And all you have to do is decide that you want to try. I want you to try this as you're trying to turn things around. It's the FitBod app. This thing is amazing. You don't need a ton of weights to do this. You can do it in your home with no weights. You can do it in the middle of nowhere like I do at Fear Bunker North. You can do it at the gym. The workouts are tailored to what you have to work with. And my gosh, they work everything. Muscles, cardiovascular system, you name it. It's time to turn it around and I want you to do it by using the Fit bod app one of the important things about fit bod is the algorithm changes which you know those are words that's kind of like above my pay grade but it senses and knows when you're improving as you work out and updates your fitness plan as you go so that you're not like stagnating and things like that and plateauing FitBot has figured it out and all you have to do for less than the cost of one session with a personal trainer you can get a full year of personalized workouts with FitBot. it integrates with your apple watch wear os smartwatch and apps like apple health fitbit and strava man this is incredible you can crush your summer fitness goals with personalized workouts from fitbod that improve as you do get 25 percent off your subscription or try out the app for free when you sign up now at fitbod.me slash zane it's got to be fitbod.me slash zane Try it out and see for yourself. 25% off your subscription or try it free at fitbod.me slash Zane. Fitbod. All right, quick pause. Don't forget about me on Cameo. Cameo Cameo.com slash Eric Zane. I love doing these. They're so much fun. And, uh, well, I'm just going to say it. There's no one on Cameo better than your old pal Eric Zane. If you're looking for a roast, if you're looking for just a, uh, a message of support, uh, I can even cater it to the kiddos. You got to, and if they want to see the pets, I'll put them, <laughs> I'll put them on there. Cameo.com slash Eric Zane. Also, uh, don't forget about Berlin Raceway. Hold on a second. Let me check here. I want to make sure. Cause sometimes it, well, typically the ticket prices are, um, uh, 12 bucks a ticket for the entire race schedule, but occasionally they'll have specialized races. Boy, what is wrong with my throat today? It's like I drank acid yeah <clears throat> the july 15th uh race is the isma uh international super modified association they are in town not to mention uh you know those cars that go around the track with the with the wing on top of them because the, then the air keeps them down on the track yeah uh, those guys are in mss which, what the hell does that even stand for? I don't even know. But anyway, it's cool. It's awesome. So the tickets are a little bit more uh, for this event on July 15th. 15 bucks still. Dirt cheap. You're also going to get the uh, limited late models and the uh, like, uh, the uh, sportsman. Okay, so 15 bucks. That's my mother's birthday. God rest her soul. If you buy them online, 15 bucks at berlinraceway.com. 15 and under, free. Parking, free. Bring a cooler with whatever you want, your snacks and your soft drinks. 
no glass, and you cannot bring in booze. They sell beer cold there, five bucks a pop. That's cheap. Dogs are cheap, three bucks a pop. Tons of other food. They got a bar underneath the grandstand that is just awesome. You got a band playing merch store. I love Berlin Raceway. BerlinRaceway.com. Uh, actually, now that I, if I would have done some research, I would have seen this ahead of time. Uh, the, the 15th and 16th, there's racing going on with the ISMA and the MSS. So you got two nights worth of racing on July 15th and 16th. If I would have scrolled down, I would have seen that, but I didn't because I suck. <laughs> okay. Uh, where was I? Now I'm getting thrown off. Can you tell I just woke up and started making this show? I do want to mention Van Dyke Mortgage. If you need a mortgage, call on Mario. He's the absolute best. In fact, call a couple other guys too who do this for a living. Call my pal Kyle Ryan. No, don't do that. I don't want to get uh, him mixed up in this nonsense. Uh, I love Kyle. Van Dyke Mortgage, 231-332-6505. If you need a refi, you need your first mortgage, you need your 10th mortgage, you do it all. Van Dyke Mortgage from anywhere in the U.S. with the exception of South Carolina, Maine, Alaska, and Hawaii. Van Dyke Mortgage. Love them so much. TC Paintball. Don't forget about Rick from TC Paintball. You want to have a great time? Uh, get your kids out there. Get your bro friends. Get your bachelor party. Team building event. Wednesdays. Uh, Wednesdays are kids days, not to mention uh, Wednesdays. Ladies day at TC Paintball. Fully stocked pro shop. Amazing, uh, amazing crew over there. Saturdays, you're going to have to make kind of like a reservation, but you can do that, whatever. And then uh, drop and play available uh, throughout the week. More details, TC Paintball gr.com okay continuing on with not the best of the eric zane show podcast there's that bird again i think there's a nest and he's like yeah there is a nest and he's he's feeding babies right now i'm actually watching a kirtland warbler formerly on the verge of extinction feeding its babies you know how i love birds man and then he flies off, or she flies off, going to get more worms. This is so great. I love it here. You know, yesterday that anxiety was so bad that I said to Diana, I go, let's go. Let's pack this shit up and get out of here. I don't, I don't feel good. She goes, what are you talking about? This is your Disney World. Have you lost your mind? I go, no, nope. we, we, we got to go. She goes, shut up. Just shut up right now, Eric. What are you talking about? I was waiting for her to like, like smack me, like, shut the fuck Get the fuck off your mother. Shut your mouth. I'm sick and tired. She puts up with so much shit for me. All right. Zaniac Tom, who, uh, man, what a, what a fun shit stirrer this guy is. Here's Tom's, um, here is Tom's uh, Facebook post. Just the other day, Tom was diagnosed with COVID-19. He works in a uh, environment where a lot of uh, vulnerable, vulnerable, I can't talk, vulnerable people are. And a few people got it. He figured it was about time. Any, any time was gonna, he was going to get affected with it. And sure enough, he did. He revealed on a post that I saw that uh, while he was feeling a little under the weather, wasn't sure if it was COVID or not. And he said that the um, the 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 deal that that convinced him that he was in fact had it was he uh, busted out like a can of his favorite soup or something like that, and uh, he put uh, put it into the his first spoonful into his mouth and he could not taste it, and it's been like his favorite thing for as long as he's been alive and he's like whoa 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 that's it forget the runny nose forget the sneezing. Forget all the other shit going on and the coughing and the fatigue and the body aches and the muscle aches. If I can't taste my cream of potato, you know I got it. Dude rushes to the medical uh, place. The uh, I think it's called hospital. What an idiot I am. It may, it may have been an urgent care. Don't know. Uh, they went ahead and um, they went ahead and um, uh, uh, gave him the test. They go, yep. 
All right, you got it, man. That's it. He didn't have to be hospitalized, but it was a rough go for him for a period of time. I'm so glad you're back healthy, Tom. He wrote this. My final Corona update. Day 16. Great news. I was cleared by the health department yesterday, and I'm returning to work. He says, I'm not 100% yet due to some lingering systems. Systems. I can't read. Symptoms. But I continue to improve each day, and I'm ready to serve again. Thanks again for all the prayers and support. Well, you know you got them from me, Tom. Everybody loves you. Everybody's pulling for you. If any of you Zadiacs are struggling with anything, you know I'm thinking about you, as we all are. I wonder if any of the people that Tom pissed off online on Zaniacs United with all of his political posts got, uh, said, Oh, fuck him. I hope he fucking croaks. I doubt it. Uh, I, I seriously doubt it. But uh, you, you got to wonder because Tom has stirred so much shit up on Zaniacs United uh, with all of his political posts. Uh, by the way, I got I saw that uh, John from Jenison, who gives us the music on the show and a whole lot more. Great, great spirit. He's such a dick. The fucker. I posted a picture when I did. I did show and tell yesterday on the Patreon of all the shit that I found out in the woods. All these old bottles that my dad would like get drunk and then he throw the shit out in the woods. Look at this bottle of Falstaff. Look at this. Looks like a butt plug. I found all this shit out in the woods. I even found this old uh, 100% steel can of Pabst, which is all rusted out, man. And it says, it's a pull tab. It says, do not litter right on the top of my dad. Hey, guy, this Pabst is delicious, man. Fuck it. And he like, throw it out in the woods. Right over here, that's where I found it. Well, anyway, I found all this shit. And I posted a picture of it. And then fucking John, his co- his comment was... Uh, something like, uh, who wants Eric to stop talking politics or some shit like that? I'm like, what? What, what does this have to do with the bottles? What you, context, please. I'll let back. Can I have a spoonful of context on your fucking anger post? And by the way, dummy, I don't tell you how to pop the popcorn at your job. What the fuck is wrong with you? Hell, the only time I ever talk anything political is when I think the last time I th- I think I talked anything political, it was um, when Trump. It wasn't even political. It was when Trump said he was going to inject people with bleach. Remember, remember that. Then I see the disinfectant where it knocks it out in a minute. Yeah, it's politics, minute. John. And is there a way we can do something like that by injection inside or no, almost the cleaning? No, there's you no see way it's we in the clean. lungs and no. it, does a tremendous number. No, it doesn't do a tremendous number on the on the lungs. It doesn't do anything. Stop. I don't remember talking anything politics. I think he might think that anytime I talk uh, Whitmer and and COVID, that that's politics. But it's not. It's not politics. Okay. It's you being healthy, you big fat jerk. Shut the fuck up. I love you, but no, you're wrong. All right, quick pause on Not the Best Of to mention that the Kent County Health Department helps make this show possible. These people work tirelessly making sure that everything is in order concerning public health. Their website, accesskent.com slash health. If you need any information on things like the WIC program, which helps you keep your family fed, in the event of, well, something kind of gets off the rails, which does take place. That's why these entities exist, to make sure that you and the kids are fed. Very basic needs. Accesskent.com slash health. Also, plenty of information when you go to that site on immunizations available for free for the kids if you qualify. Measles, mumps, rubella, whooping cough, pertussis, meningitis, uh, the cervical cancer vaccine. These are all important things that you must take advantage of. You really should. If you aren't, well, okay. You're kind of rolling the dice there. Anyway, all the information is there. Accesskent.com slash health. Plus information on uh, any type of sexually transmitted infection uh, that can help you, uh, well, 
take care of whatever issue you might be have uh, having. Could be uh, HIV testing. Uh, we just finished the month, the uh, month of June, HIV Awareness Month. So it's all there. Accesskent.com slash health. I thank them for allowing me to talk about their initiatives. Okay, the flooring team. I got the installers. That's Bennett Flooring Installation. Love them. 616-318-0167. If you need flooring installed in and around West Michigan, the experts at Bennett Flooring Installation want to do this for you. I've had uh, the cousins in my house. That would be Jacob and Jason. And they do an amazing job. You know, and they encourage you to go ahead and uh, get rid of the old stuff. And once the, uh, that's an easy job, you know. I mean, anybody can do that. Pulling up carpet, whatever it may be. Once you get that secured, call the boys. They'll come over, measure, let you know how much it's going to cost to install the new stuff. 616-318-0167. Get that black flooring department ambulance in your driveway and get ready for fun. And they might even set off the fire alarms. The flooring that I want you to buy, okay, there's a great business called Johnson Carpet One Floor and Home in Granville, Michigan. The main showroom is in that downtown Granville, Michigan area across from Striders on the um, south side of Chicago Drive. Just down the street to the west, uh, probably a quarter mile, the not-so-pretty discount outlet is nestled right behind Little Caesars. It's like an enormous tan pool barn with a red sign the size of a computer monitor. Okay, that's the discount outlet. Uh, Darwin, who owns Johnson's, he sits in the main showroom, air-conditioned, posh, uh, getting manis and petties all day long and uh, calling up the major flooring distributors and having uh, flooring delivered by the truckload of the absolute best-selling brands based on trends. He buys it for lower than anyone else will pay for it as a store owner because he's buying so much. He's doing that on purpose because then he's just going to throw it into the discount outlet and price it cheaper than anyone else. So if you are looking for flooring for your home, any type of flooring, Start at the discount outlet, Johnson's discount outlet behind Little Caesars, Chicago Drive, Granville, Michigan. If, if by some crazy chance they don't have what you want, you go down to the main, uh, the uh, main showroom and talk to those folks. But I like the whole idea, and I've done this twice now, where I just walk into the discount outlet. There's um, the the floor, everything's set out. You just pick pick out what you want, and then you leave with it right there. It's awesome. Make sure you bring a vehicle that can transport the flooring. Johnson Carpet One Discount Outlet. Uh, That is managed by Zaniac Kent. Drop the E at a U. Thank you, Kent, for helping facilitate. And uh, thank you to uh, Johnson's for being a sponsor of this show. Okay. Uh, We've got another bid here. Let's uh, uh, wrap up this edition of not the best of the Eric Zane Show podcast. Father of mine. All right. JM Synthetics online at jmsynthetics.com. Good morning. Good morning, Dad. How are you? I'm okay. How about yourself? Doing fantastic, Dad. We were just talking about. People who let dogs sleep on the bed with them. Okay. And, uh, what were you saying? <laughs> well, you know, like, uh, sometimes, um, like a dog would sleep in a dog bed, but yeah. some other, some other people actually, when they sleep, the dog is on the bed with them or uses the person's bed as their bed. So would you would you like it if a dog slept on your bed? Well, I got some news for you. Hundred years ago, I had a dog, and I had my dog sleeping on a bed. I don't know 
I was a little boy. Yeah. Whatever. Well, how would you feel about that today? Like, let's say you had a dog. Would the dog? Would you let the dog sleep like uh, right in between you and Joanne? No, I would not do that. I think the dog belongs to the dog bed, assigned for the dog, not in the regular bed. No way. Is that because it's just a little gross? You know, the dog dog might lick his butt or something like that, or. No, those are not the thoughts I have, but I just don't have any kind of uh, feeling for the dog to sleep on the same bed that I'm sleeping. Uh, I think uh, I think you should uh, be rough in, in your own brain, not rough really, but adamant to train the dog to sleep in a doggy bed on the yeah, floor yeah yeah some people do do that some people do do yeah, that. yeah 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 i do know that now some people claim that sleeping with a dog uh is good for their mental health i i see no connection with a dog sleeping in the bed and a mental health if you need a mental health go to a doctor yeah you can't <laughs> yeah Really? If you need a, so let me write this down. If you need a mental health, go <laughs> go see a doctor. Go see a mental doctor. <laughs> you cannot get the dog to heal you. All right, so that's just all nonsense. No, that, that, this is ridiculous. This is really ridiculous. Sorry that I'm very, uh, you know. No, uh, no. I'm hey. up with this for whoever does that. I don't want to hurt their feelings in any way because right. that's their feeling and that's all this is. But the dog does not belong in your bed. Thank you. Yes. I, and uh, I'm guessing Joanne feels the same way. Absolutely. Well, oh. I think it's up to the individual. Well, according to Joanne, it's up to the individual. Okay. All right. But I don't. I don't. I don't see the human connection for the dog to be in the bed and the dog. And right. a human. Yeah, get get off the couch. Get off the couch, you know, and get off yeah. the Yeah. You know, we were, I mean, I love dogs. You know me. I, I, oh, yeah. I mean, I, I, hey, I used to have like three dogs or two dogs. I know something it. Like that. I know it. I know it. I remember uh, a fa- very famous line you said when you were petting my dog, O'Neal, and you said, this dog's hair is so soft. <laughs> yes. Yes, I was touching them, just, and the dog was just letting me do that, you know? Oh, yeah. Okay. Uh, uh, when Susie came, uh, comes over, uh-huh. uh, Chloe is an adamant uh, uh-huh. dog lover. Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. Uh, you're... She she would have 15 dogs in her house if, she, if they let her. Talking about Lizzie. Uh, yeah, uh, right. Yeah, you said Susie. I'll just... Oh, no, no. Well, I got too many kids hanging out. I know. Yeah, hey. That, that's what we do. We get our kids mixed up. Okay, very good. All right, I got all that. That was just a okay. discussion that we were having before we reached out to you guys today. But uh, all right, yeah, another day. It's going to be another warm, nice day around here. And then I think it's going to get chilly, Dad. You might want to you, – you inform me that you're getting the garden ready again. Yes. Actually, last year when before the year was up, uh, we take everything out of the garden and all that. I hands and knees for about twelve hours. I pull every weed out of that okay. garden. Okay, so it's ready now. You just got to plant, right? Do you have yeah, to? Right. Do you have to get the soil ready, like turn it over or anything? Uh, oh yeah, I got to get ready for that. Okay, so I, that I got a small uh, uh, gizmo that turns the dirt over. And then when I do that, my neighbor comes out with a humongous size of equipment. He turns that over, yeah. and then he's the guy that plants my garden and all that. Oh, my gosh. All right. Well, we're looking forward to that, Dad. There's no doubt. Yes. Sarah has a question, Dad. She. This is what Sarah wrote. She said, Meathead, my garbage disposal stinks. What do, what do you recommend to freshen it up? You know, like you put the food in the garbage, you turn it on, and it, it goes down the drain? Uh, in the sink. Well, I don't know. By common sense, is that I just have to take it outside, completely scrub it down. The garbage disposal. Uh, yeah. something. You yeah, know. This I mean, is you gotta uh, keep it clean. Baking soda. 
Yeah, but this is the thing that's uh, in the bottom of the sink. You know, it's uh, it's attached to the sink underneath the uh, you know in the in the cabinet underneath the sink, and yeah, so yeah. It, it's it's difficult to uh, uh, get at. You know, and I uh, is there any like um, way that any product you can put in there? I think Joanne said one, right? Yeah, Joanne. A little baking soda can help. help. According to that, and you got to scrub it constantly. Well, it's kind of tough to scrub it because you, you stick your hand in there. It's not a lot. Of, I mean, it's not a lot of uh, uh, room. Well, put rubber gloves or something and get your hands in there and clean it up. Or just can you like get rid of it and replace it with something another one? Yeah, I don't know. I think she's trying to avoid that. I think there's a product you can buy that you actually drop in there, and then it's supposed to like uh, uh, you know clean it. Like you like put water in, you turn the damn thing on, and it grinds it all up and it cleans it. Baking soda does the same thing. There you go. John says baking soda does the same thing. Try a whole box of baking soda. No, not a whole box. No, not a whole box. <laughs> She says, uh, "No, that's, okay. That's, that's uh, really about half a box, half half a small box." She says, "Okay, and scrub it with it, you know." All right, Don writes, "Meathead." He's in a debate with his wife. Um, when, and when it they come, it comes to uh, applesauce. Have you ever had applesauce, Dad? Oh yeah. Well, um. Joanne, so she makes it. Okay. Well, Don likes it warm, and his wife likes it cold. And uh, Don says that she likes it cold because she's lazy and doesn't want to heat it up. He says, what do you think, hot or cold, and am I being a jerk? Well, I got to go for help here on this one. Why can't he heat it up in a microwave? Why can't he heat it up in a microwave? Like for her? Because for him. For well, him. well, he he likes it warm. He yeah. does do that. Well, so warm his up and let warm it up. Cold. Yeah, well, warm it up in a microwave for you. Yeah, eat it and let her eat her cold. This seems like a dumb thing to have an argument about. Yeah, it really does. Uh, it's not dumb. I wouldn't call it dumb. Cause, it is dumb. <laughs> well, I mean, when everyone does something, we don't. We can't be. And you don't do it. You can't be calling them. They're doing a dumb thing. No. No, you can't. Okay. <laughs> you know, I mean, it, it's their thought. Uh, let them do what they want to do. Yeah, it's their. It's, uh, it's dumb if you don't let them eat it up. And uh, yeah, I know that. Oh, okay. I know you like to say oftentimes, it's his mentality. Yeah. And if there's that's a problem... Good. You reminded me of that. Yeah. I haven't used that word for a while. Well, you well, you did say earlier to go see a mental doctor. Yeah. So, that's uh, kind of the same. But I didn't think of mentality. <laughs> gotcha. All right, Dad. Uh, Aram. <clears throat> Excuse me. Aram. Hey, Aram, yeah. my buddy. Aram says, greetings. A fr- greetings. He says that um, a friend of mine broke his Lenten promise by eating sweets. He is scared to darken the doors of his church. What advice can we give this Mickey Mouse guy who can't even quit sweets for 40 days? Signed, Aram. Aram, if, if it's a character of a person as far as food is concerned... Not other things right now. It's it's their choice, you know. Uh, they, they they have to be taught. You can't harp at them. No. Well, no. I, I think he's saying that he's giving him a hard time because he gave it up for Lent, and he can't even he can't even give it up for Lent. Well, if this other person, is, is, that's what he wants to do. He's just not going to listen to you if he's that adamant in his thoughts. So don't waste your time on him. Yeah, don't even. I would. I would just ignore him. Ignore him, and that's what he wants to do. I mean, if, if it's your son doing that and a child, you 
are concerned about it, then you're going to work at it. But there's another person that does that. Well, hey, let them do it. Hey, it's his. It's tell, his... Him, tell, him, tell him, this is what your health situation is. If you do this, you're going to, yeah. I don't want to use the word die, but you're going to hurt. Well, yeah, if I you know. Don't do but... that, you could be healthy. Well, again, it's not about that it was the religious aspect of it is what he's concerned about well what is the religion says about sweets well or- in in particular uh catholics during lent they make a promise to give something up for lent i don't even know if you are familiar with that yeah i've heard of it okay i've heard of it so that's that's what he's saying he's saying he can't even give up sugar for uh, a a for for like Jesus. Well, did Jesus say anything about eating sweets? <laughs> no, no, I don't think that. I don't think he did. But I think I mean, that. I mean, uh, to, to fast, you know. Yeah, fast. You talking about fasting? Uh, not exactly. I, I think well, I think the so Lent... I'm, not under, I'm not understanding the question. Well, I think the uh, the, the the yes, fasting is part of Lent, but. Also, a, a Lenten, as I understand it, a Lenten promise is something that you stick to for 40 days to remind you that uh, you're giving up something small for Lent while God gave up his only son, which is something big. That is the uh, mindset of Lent. Well, some people I don't know probably hate my guts for saying this, but I really don't believe in that. Church, yeah. <laughs> I mean, the Catholic Church believes that. Well, I think the uh, Church I, believes that. I, I don't believe in that myself. It's Chris. It's a Christian uh, principle to give up food. Well, uh, yeah, I don't know. Maybe you missed that part of uh, the, the, the 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 church <laughs> calendar, but. Uh, <laughs> The 40 days of Lent leading up to the resurrection of Jesus. Uh, yeah, it's, it's kind of a, uh, it's kind of a, it's kind of been around for a long time. I, I've forgotten those things. Oh, okay. Because I have not practiced that. Okay. I love, I love God. Dearly. All right. And, uh, but I don't, some of the by biblical things were written by men or women, uh, I don't think God ever spoke up to, in my opinion, that you can't be doing this. Yeah. Hey, listen, next time you see pastor, uh, what's his name again? Pastor. Kurt. Next time you see pastor Kurt, don't tell him any of this. No, you can't. (laughs) Don't say this to pastor Kurt. He's going to go. I know. We don't discuss that. No, he's going to say Reuben. Any of these things. I I, one thing, but but this is an important thing. One thing I remember that I made a vow to myself that I never discuss religion with other people. No, no. Okay. You're like, I keep that to myself. I don't want to talk about it. I believe in Christ. Uh huh. I don't discuss the religion aspect of that with anybody. Okay. You're like, hey, I'm keeping this to myself, and that's the end of it. <laughs> that's right. God okay. loves me. If I love him, show him affection, love, and then and, uh, well, that's... follow the rules of it. Yeah, well, that's all very Fine. nice. That's my, my, that's my personality and my judge, yeah. judgment. Um... I decide to judge myself, not anyone else. Okay, I'm writing this down. It's my personality and my judgment. Right. Okay. All right. So, well, it's... The religion, I never discuss religion with anybody else. No? I, I believe in the Bible. Uh-huh. I believe in Christ. And that's all there is okay. about my religion. Well, so now this is uh, Holy Week in the church, and... Uh, you guys have uh, been kind of like away physically because of this uh, this illness. Yes. So, yes. Um, yeah, I, I'm assuming you're just gonna kind of lay low this week. Is that the plan? Yep. Okay. Well, we, we have been. Yeah. Okay. All right. Fair enough. Fair enough. All right. Let's move on. Adam writes, "Dear Meathead, good morning. Thank you for taking my question. Do you have any thoughts on why a carrot?" seems to be more orange in color than an orange is. Oh, my God. 
this guy really studies things. <laughs> <laughs> I never thought about that. I don't know what to tell him. Yeah, uh, you know, um, I guess it, in some cases, a carrot would be more orange than an orange. Don't they die oranges? Do they die? John just said, don't they die oranges? Uh, I, you know, I don't know. I, I haven't heard if, if oranges are dyed. I, is Joanne suggesting that when they're on the tree, they're like blue? No, no. They're, uh, to, um, I don't know. Maybe I'm wrong, but I heard years ago that uh, the, some some of the uh, yeah. color them to make them look even better. But I'm probably wrong. No, I don't know. Um. Uh, let's I see. Never, I never thought of anybody. Uh, no, no, no. Orange. She's right. She's absolutely right. Um, the FDA I'm ha- has. I'm saying I've heard that. Well, you're you're correct in what you have heard because I'm looking at it right now. It says it is a common practice to color the skins of oranges yep. in certain areas because they don't look orange because of climactic or cultural conditions. And so they, the food producers will actually make the oranges more orange. You, a dad, she's always correct. She always knows things. Hey, she's a quiet but knowledgeable woman. Well, yeah, I didn't even bother trying to, you know, some people might, conventional wisdom, some people might go, no, that's not true, but I know better because... I mean, numerous times with Joanne, there have been instances where that exact thing just happened. If she, when Joanne says yeah. something, yeah, you better believe in it. Not always. Well, not always. I'm telling you, she's being uh, kind of cautious about. Uh, oh yeah, building up on her own uh, ego, but no, uh, no. I learned by my mistakes. <laughs> no, <laughs> you know what she said. She is a fountain of wisdom, for God's sake. <laughs> hey, no, no, she doesn't push that. She's right on. She's a quiet. She's I know. A quiet, in her own thoughts, she's very quiet. Dad, the gentleman who sent you the Michigan keychain has written yeah. in. Yeah. That would be Mark, who lives in Mississippi now. He yes. used to live in New Orleans. He says, Meathead, uh, I want to talk to you about when we sent a man to the moon. Do you think that really happened or that the government has been lying to us? Please embellish. Wait a minute. Say that again. <laughs> government send the what? Well, uh, Mark is uh, talking about, do you remember when the U.S. sent a man to the moon? Yeah. Okay. Well, some people have suggested that that was all fake. Okay. And he said, what do you think, Meathead? Did we really go to the moon, or was it fake? No, it sent somebody out to the moon. I believe in that. Okay, you do not believe that the government was lying just to uh, um, make us think that we went no, to the, the moon. No, the government didn't send anything out there. It's scientific people that are involved and do these things. Well, that's the uh, it's, it's not the government, no. Yeah. Yeah, it is. It's not a bunch of nerds that get together and build a rocket. No, but there's, yeah, there are people that are doing this. For, for, frankly, I really don't understand why the whole world is messing around with the, uh, the skies and all that. I really I can't understand. Like, these people are spending thousands of dollars to get in that vehicle and go up there and don't even get out of it and come back down. That costs $500,000. I think it's but much. I what is that common sense? I think it's actually more than that. It's uh, well, I'm just uh, to you shooting at it. Yeah, it's it's remarkable. I, you know, Dad, I I kind of agree with you. Why would s- the the amount of money spent could like you know feed an entire city of uh, people that are yeah, impoverished? Yeah. For God's sake, there are sake. people down here in this country 
Now, some of them are being taken care of, you know, they're, they're being taken care of. They could use that money to raise their kids and, and raise their families and all that. And here we spend it on a body. Yeah. A flight to go up there in the air, and they don't, they don't even get up to look at the moon or anything else. They turn around and come right back. Right. It's just minutes. And then, you know what, Dad? If you were to ever run for the presidency or, the, or to be the governor, I think that that should be your campaign slogan. I can't understand why people mess with the skies. Yeah. There you go. I just cannot understand that. All right. Uh, let's see. John writes... Jonathan writes, Meathead, some people believe in conspiracy theories, like the earth is flat. What is your opinion on these theories and the people that believe them? I honestly, that's a pretty deep subject. I have no clue what's going on. Well, I mean, if some... I mean, if someone came up to you and said, "Hey, Reuben, the Earth is flat," you're gonna, well, you're yeah, pro- probably gonna no, think, "No, the Earth is, it is what it is, and what is what people have scientifically proven uh, the way it is." Yeah. So, uh, some bonehead comes up and says, "No, it's flat." Did they read about Magellan? <laughs> <laughs> what? Yes. Magellan. She's talking about a, she's talking about an explorer who, just, oh, yeah. you know. Don't they read about Magellan? Right, yeah, he starts sailing and then he shows up on the other side. You know, it's yeah. uh, it's pretty easy and simple to see the curvature of the earth. You know what? I think a lot of millions of people have nothing else to do on this earth but to sit around and think of these concoctions. Yeah, that this is that, this is that. And then when you heard about, oh, hey, I never heard of that. No, you couldn't be more right. It drives me crazy. And there's quite a large contingency of people that do what you just described. And I just want to grab them by the neck and, and you know. I, I see that. Yeah. It, it's just no, no common sense to it. Why do you spend your time concocting this stuff? Really, they need a they need a hobby. They need to do something. Maybe get some exercise. Well, send them here. I'll give them a hobby. <laughs> you can hey, you can put them on the island. Yeah. Oh man, you brought up the subject again. I really love that island. <laughs> I'm telling you, yeah. don't you think? Don't you think it's a better idea than the, we to put them in a prison for life? Yeah. And feed them, call them. Yeah. Yep. Yeah. And then they're of no use to humanity. Yeah. I mean, seriously, uh, you take these these uh, these really bad people, put them on the island, and... Uh, one T-shirt, one pair of sandals, and once a week, drop some food down. So you look talking about a bunch of people wearing T-shirts and no pants. No, no pants, no nothing. Let them go naked. Yeah. I I mean, living in it's, it's got to be a jungle with very little trees. Yeah. Wait, did you say it's got to be a jungle with very little trees? Yeah. I mean, you know. Okay. Um, so in case they can, in case they, the sun is hot, they can cook in it. Hell with them. You don't want them to live. Yes, it's their problem. That's, that's, a, that's a punishment. Hey, I just hear every day on the news this bonehead guy that did this and that, and, and it's, I start thinking, why wouldn't this guy not think of, hey, I shouldn't be damaging this man or this woman or this child. Right. These criminals are unheard of. Yep. Do yep. you see on an average of three or four people got shot and killed? Oh yeah, on a daily basis. Yeah, it's uh, it's it's definitely bad, Dad. There's there's no question. I think a lot of people would love to uh, put people on the island. Yeah, and then we put guns in their hands. Let's go kill them some more. <laughs> why don't why not eliminate selling guns, Dad? You know, a lot of people would love to hear you uh, as if you were running for political office, saying these things. People would vote for you, Dad. There's no question. Oh, man, I don't want to be elected for nothing as far as that goes. But uh, I'll tell you what, I got uh, 10, 12 neighbors in here around yeah. me. Yep. 
we love each other. We say hi, how yeah. are you? They come up with their dogs walking. They're just dog stops, and I'm sitting there on a on the ground petting the dog. This is great living that way. Yeah, that's uh, you've got your own little. You're like the you're like the leader of the community. Honest to God, it's, I don't know if they realize that, but they sure as hell don't. Uh, uh, ignore what I'm doing. No, they love you. That's why. Yeah. That's why so many people help you guys. Well, um, let's see. Uh, I have another question about the moon. Uh, Dean, well, well, about the moon. Yeah, yeah. Dean has a question. He says, "Could you settle a dispute?" And maybe Joanne can weigh in on this too. She's in on it. Is the moon a planet, or is the moon a moon? Please embellish. I think I would want to guess that the moon is a planet. But it's not a... Uh, yeah, it probably could be livable because it's not going to be like the sun that will burn the hell out of you. Well, um... It's I mean, a planet. But they call it the moon. There's a man in it. She wants to say there's a man in it. Man in the moon. <laughs> well... A moon is a moon. A mo- uh, okay, so maybe it could be both. It's a planet. It's a planet. It's a planet and a moon. I think it's a moon. It's a moon. It's, th- a, it's a shiny... You know, I want to say for a Christian person yeah. that it's God's choice to light up the world. There you go. Hey, you're bringing Night it all. And day. You're bringing it all around. Just don't tell God about your uh, lack of knowledge on Lent. Well, yeah, that's <laughs> my that's my understanding. Oh, I know you're serious about that. You say, I'm not talking to anybody about this. <laughs> <laughs> okay. What the hell, you know? Um. Uh, all right. How about this one? This is the last question that I have. Tra- All right, don't stop. I love today. Travis sa- asks, my neighbor has five dogs who constantly bark at 5 a.m. How should I confront them? Should I uh, Will Smith them or just or be just as annoying and blast music on repeat? Well, well um, yeah, do you want to talking to them? Yeah, I don't know why everybody has to uh, go to violence or Playing loud no, music. No, no, but uh, but it really is not a right thing to do to have five dogs. It just isn't. Well, I got four. I mean, well, it's not a right thing to do. But you, you are an intelligent person. You take care of those animals. Yeah, it's like a full time job. It's just not running running loose around, and destroying the neighbors neighbors' lots and all that. Well, sometimes I know you. Sometimes they take off, but I don't. You well, know. yeah, but you still. I remember you, the first dog that you found and you kept. Oh yeah, there's been a lot. There's been a lot, and that lasted a long time. Well, yeah. And I actually. Loved you for doing that. Yes, I love animals. That's a a big. Uh, in fact. Yeah, yeah, and me too. Believe you me, I really care. But I don't want to have an animal because I just don't think I want to be taken care of them. Yeah, you don't. You don't like the idea of the commitment. You like to be able to just not worry about them. Yeah, we've had dogs. You know that. You grew up with dogs. Yeah, we'll just bring ours over, and you can say, "I li- this dog's hair." That's right. Hey, have you noticed how your dog comes out and just lay down uh, yeah. under my uh, seat? No, they love you. They love you. There's no question. I mean, hey, no problem. Dogs are great animals. Okay. Well, Dad, um, you've done it again. You and Joanne have uh, just done a uh, absolute, absolute uh, t- time once again uh, talking with us. And everybody loves you. And, uh, you know, just have a hell of a day, okay? All right. You do the same, but I want to tell you something. You really threw some heavy-duty stuff to me today. What are you talking about? You know, your questions were kind of tough for me to deal with. Them. Really? I thought you did awesome. Well, but I within myself don't feel that I did the right thing. Oh, are you uh, are you having second thoughts about some of them? 
No, no, no. It's just I had to think what I'm going to say. Usually I can blab it right out. Yeah, well, that's okay. You got to take your time, come up with the answer, and you did. You did great. Well, I hope so. Yeah, no, don't worry about it. Now, if, right. you, if you suddenly, like, freaked out and started saying the N-word or something like that, I mean, that... I, no, 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 no. Oh, hey, uh, in conclusion, I really want to... Uh, what do you think this, uh, the laws have allowed people to have guns and all kinds of them? Oh, you want my opinion on gun ownership? Yeah, and, uh, you noticed I'm talking about the guns that have gotten into the bad elements. Well, I think, you know, there is a, um, there is an opinion that the presence of guns causes crime to occur, but there is an opposite opinion that says, yes, guns exist. Bad people get the guns any way they can and then do terrible things with them. So the idea is, why should the people who actually use guns because, well, for whatever reason, to harm themselves or to to hunt or whatever, why should they be punished because uh, bad people are going to get those guns? You know what I mean? Outside of waving a magic wand and make all guns disappear... Um, these, the bad people are going to get guns, you know? So I, you know, I guess I'm torn on that. Um, you know, uh, I, I, I haven't looked into it enough to determine one way or the other, what, uh, a gun control can do to aid a community. But I tend to think that it, uh, will do nothing to, uh, to improve crime, to, you know, make it so that, um, there's less uh, uh, violence. Well, then, if guns are not available to them, how could they do commit crime? So how are you going to keep them from being available? No, it should not be available for right. the public. Well, it guns let's, should belong right. to the people that are the law enforcing people. Okay. So, I mean, I guess um, let's just say for this discussion we could make all guns disappear. Um, yes, totally. Melt them all down. Right. There there were no, let's just say fantasy world, there are no more guns. Um, I don't know if that necessarily means that there is no more crime or violent crime. I think it's, there would be my, I would be under the impression that there would be, they'd come up with another way to harm people. Bad people would. They'd stab you. They stab you, you want to say, I believe right. that. I mean, it, uh, Eric, do you listen to the news on a daily basis with how many people died of gun use? Mm-hmm. Yes, I uh, I know that there, when a lot of times, like there was just a crime on the subway in, in New York, that's probably what you're referencing. Yeah, four people on one shot got the kill. Um, there was a lot oh. of, there was a lot of uh, horrible things. I, I have, um, I kind of like, I go the other way. If the, in New York, it is, uh, is one of the strictest places for guns. It's very difficult to even carry a gun in a city like New York. And so that is a, a very uh, ripe area, fertile ground for the bad guys to carry out their bad things. Had the bad guys known or been uh, under the impression that any one of those civilians could be armed, they would not have done that, you know? I think that the opposite is, I actually think the answer is more guns. <laughs> that if more people, more uh, uh, law-abiding people were armed, the bad guys would know that and wouldn't go to the places that are soft targets, like the inside of a subway train. I think they should ban guns except strictly for hunting, and that's all there is to it. Hey, you know what? I'm glad that you are strong in your opinion. That's my feeling. Hey, I had guns. Uh, Well, you uh, had a you had hunting rifle. uh, Yeah, well, for thirty years it sat there, twenty years, and I bought it from you know Michael. Right. A handgun. Okay, that thirty-eight. Yeah. Yeah, we went up north. Were you there when we shot him? No. I shot him about two, three times, 
and yeah. then I had no use. It sat there for years. Okay. So I finally saw it, and I called Mike. I said, Mike, you're an avid uh, owner of handguns and all that. Well, what are you going to do about this gun that uh, you sold me a long time ago? Yeah. So I'd like to buy it back. I sold it to him. Oh, you, oh, he's got it now? He's got that revolver? Yes. I. Uh, what the hell is the sense of me having a gun when I am not going to use it at all? Well, so some don't people say that's what everybody's norm. Yes, they got a gun; they're going to use it for something, hunting or so. I have no desire for that. Well, I, the way I look at it is this: in the very rare instance that some weirdo decides to shoot up Walmart, in the very rare, if I happen to be there, rather than running away or hiding and hoping I don't get shot. I like my odds much better that I can pull out my pistol and shoot him. And shoot him. That is the only, that is the deciding factor to me. I would like to be, um, that is a safety uh, net for me that I would be in control of that in the event of a person doing something terrible. I could save someone's life or my own. And, um, yeah, that's, that's kind of my, my thought on that. I understand what you're saying. I believe it. And I trust you for all the things that you said, you are really a good man with a gun. I remember an issue that you really should have pulled a gun on this guy. You do? Was it was it yeah, was it my brother? One time that uh, not too long ago that we were up north. Oh no 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 no! You see no, that's listen, the thing. That was my feeling. I said, Scott, no. I like to see him pull out and uh, no. Him. no no no. Well, that's the thing. You see, it training teaches but you. you didn't do that. No, you don't. And I and uh, I don't even know if I had my pistol on me. I wouldn't have because you there's, had it. There's a there's a protocol, and it is the gun only comes out to shoot. And you have to, your life has to actually be threatened. And it's a very, very strict open and shut thing. Um, well, I, tr- I trusted your intelligence. You right. control it well. So my point is, a person who has the required training to have that pistol recognizes and discerns right from wrong situation arising that deadly force is necessary. That situation did not warrant deadly force. All it warranted was me telling that guy to hey shut up that's all so he had a gun i don't think he did he had a gun he didn't pull it he I, didn't pull it but he had a gun I, and i'm standing there with this big cane in my hand i didn't yeah, want to no. intervene with that i think I'm, what's going on i i, I i'm 90 i'm 100 sure that he did not. It, you 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 may yeah. have you may have added a layer to that story. It was just a couple of old men yelling at each other. Yeah, well, no, he didn't uh, have a gun, Dad. No, 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 I, uh, no, well, no. Anyway, the, I was glad that it turned out the way it did. Oh yeah, no big deal. That the trick was just because somebody was going to use his area to yes. Oh, no, it was no the question. Damn thing was. Uh, I remember, I remember you were the one that uh, lit the fuse because the guy started to talk and you go, hey, we don't need a lecture. <laughs> yeah, yeah. <laughs> well, anyway, it went, yeah. it went nice. All right. Well, look, hey, everybody loves you guys. And, uh, I love you too, honey. And you have a nice day. I'll talk to you very soon. Okay, guys? You bet. All right. I'm hungry. Yeah, I know. I got to come see you. We're going to have a cookout. All right. Joanne, you have happy Easter. And happy Easter. Yes, baby Jesus is coming to town. I God should say you. he's rising from the dead. Audience, you have wonderful people. Okay, guys. We'll talk to you. Goodbye. Okay, see ya. And the cats in the cradle and the silver spoon. Little boy blue and the man on the moon. Okay. Wow. That is it. Putting the wraps on another edition of Not the Best of the Eric Zane Show podcast. Thank you for listening to it. I appreciate that.
If you want more, go to my Patreon. Patreon.com slash Eric Zane. P-A-T-R-E-O-N dot com slash Eric Zane. For more content, five or ten bucks a month. Thank you so much for listening to this. You guys have a good one. Till next time, bye-bye. A fortune forecast update brought to you by the Ohio Lottery. Well, hey there, Ohio. We're tracking a lot of jackpot activity over the next few days. We have rolling cash five and lucky for life in the forecast the entire week. But we also have major drawings for Powerball moving in, followed by scattered Mega Millions drawings through the week with some classic lotto drawings popping up here and there as well. There are big drawings every day, so stay tuned to the Fortune Forecast Center for the latest jackpot developments. Lottery players are subject to Ohio laws and commission regulations. Please play responsibly.